Number one, a major aim of the programme is to take those already identified to be at high risk and prevent their development of type 2 diabetes. Number two, of course, and this relates more to sustainability of health systems across the world, and in particular our own NHS, obviously, is to reduce or change the trajectory of incidence of type 2 diabetes. So uh, a certain number of people uh, d are developing type 2 diabetes every day, every week, every month and every year. And if we can reduce that number, we can have a significant impact, not just on those individuals who would otherwise be suffering the consequences of a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, but actually uh, to beneficially impact the sustainability of, of the NHS and our health system. And um, thirdly, I think it's an, another important thing to recognise is that both we as healthcare professionals, who of course like to please the people that we're looking after and, uh, uh, and that we're seeing, and our pet population at large, I think, see the NHS as something there to fix a problem. So if I wake up not feeling very well with a problem tomorrow, I'd like to be able to book a 10 minute appointment with my GP. I'd like to go into that appointment, spend the 10 minutes discussing my problem and walk out the door with a solution, ideally written on a prescription. Um, if we are to move into the preventative arena uh, and to, to, to carry uh, uh, or, or to win the hearts and minds of our population and our healthcare professionals, I think the NHS also needs to be able to show that it can do prevention and do prevention well. Now our flagship prevention programme is the National Type 2 Diabetes Prevention Programme. We have uh, a large uh, and elaborate evaluation wrapped around that programme so that in a few years time uh, um, we uh, hopefully we'll be able to demonstrate quite clearly that the programme is b doing what's written on the tin and that the NHS can very effectively uh, um, roll out and implement uh, a prevention programme for the population. Well, we've been very pleased. We started national rollout uh, two years ago in April of 2016. So in the first year of national rollout, we achieved a geographical coverage of around 50% of England. Uh, um, we, um, in the second year of national rollout, so up to the end of March uh, this year, uh, we achieved 75% coverage. And just within the next uh, two months or so, uh, coinciding with the NHS's 70th birthday, we will achieve full national coverage, so 100% geographical coverage of England. Um, we did modelling uh, to, to look at uh, um, the effect, the, the, the clinical benefit of the programme, to look at the cost of the programme and to look at its cost effectiveness and also the potential for realising return on our investment in the long term uh, um, with the programme. And we made some assumptions at, at uh, uh, initiation of the programme of what we would achieve. One such assumption was that uh, of the referrals made that about 40% of those people would attend. Well, we've seen better than we expected. Um, we've seen higher referral numbers than we had modelled for, around 15% 15, 15 more than we had anticipated, which I think very encouragingly suggests that people out there who are at risk are embracing the opportunity and our healthcare professionals see this uh, as a valuable uh, opportunity as well to refer uh, uh, um, people into the programme. So the referral rates are higher than we expected. The conversion of referral to attendance is actually looking more like 50 to 60% now rather than the, the originally modelled 40% uh, assumption which is great. For those that have initiated the intervention it involves uh, a, a 9 to 12 month uh, program with at least 13 face to face group based interventions. Those that start uh, attending their group based intervention we're seeing over 50% uh, complete or attend at least eight of the sessions, uh, which is very pleasing. Um, and also we have early data emerging now on the achieved weight loss, which is a reasonable surrogate for how well we may be preventing uh, uh, type 2 diabetes in those individuals. And the weight loss again is uh, um, greater than what we had expected from the evidence base. Uh, and so we are seeing in those that are overweight or obese and uh, um, complete the programme, or at least attend over eight of the sessions, we're seeing around 3.7 kilogram weight loss, which is at least one kilogram more than we had uh, anticipated when we started the programme. So all in all to date, it's early days of course, and that emerging data, because it takes uh, uh, up to a year for people to complete the programme, while we've got 
167,000 people referred in. We haven't got quite so many coming off the other end yet, but the initial data, I'd have to say, is very encouraging. Um, there are certain groups that are, are at significantly higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. So people from more deprived areas are at higher risk and encouragingly we've seen a slightly higher number of people uh, um, from the most deprived uh, fifth of the population attending than from the least deprived fifth, which is really encouraging. Um, we know that people of South Asian, African, Caribbean, Middle Eastern uh, origin are at uh, significantly greater risk of type 2 diabetes and actually one in four of all pe people attending, so 25% of those attending the programme are from those higher risk ethnic groups. So it would appear that we're tackling the uh, um, inequalities, if you like, of where the burden of type 2 diabetes falls. We, we, we seem to be tackling that very effectively. The other dimension is uh, uh, according to uh, uh, um, sex, so uh, men are at slightly higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Traditionally, women tend more to attend weight loss programs, so 80 to 90 percent of some of the commercial programs will see uh, attendees uh, uh, be women rather than men, and we've, we're seeing around 45 percent of our attendees men, uh, which is uh, significantly higher uh, than many other programs and perhaps what we had expected, which again is very encouraging in terms of doing what we need to do, which is to address those at highest, or, or to empower those at highest risk, to modify that risk. Digital technologies are becoming increasingly popular out there. We, we're seeing hundreds and tens of thousands of uh, uh, health apps, for example, out there. And the promise of digital in, in the healthcare environment is twofold, really. Firstly, greater reach, and secondly, lower unit cost. We had always uh, uh, suggested that our type 2 diabetes prevention programme would be based on best evidence and the best evidence pointed towards face-to-face -to -face interventions. There was much less in evidence around digital approaches to preventing type 2 diabetes. And so we've taken a very uh, uh, different approach uh, to uh, how we deliver uh, digital interventions to try to prevent type 2 diabetes. We're actually piloting those interventions, so we've taken five uh, different uh, uh, digital products and we're piloting them in live environments with a, uh, an elaborate uh, evaluation programme wrapped around that, which will tell us after 18 months whether those products are working, whether they're actually uh, uh, doing what we need them to do to prevent type 2 diabetes. So the digital programme is a little more speculative, it's testing products in a live environment and evaluating them, but the promise of digital obviously is very exciting with that greater reach and potential for lower unit costs. So. And of course if we can establish uh, the effectiveness of our digital approaches to preventing type 2 diabetes, um, there's the potential then to offer choice to individuals at high risk, the choice of face-to-face group-based interventions, which many find very supportive in terms of that group dynamic, or indeed uh, many perhaps of, of working age where it's more difficult to attend the classes or people in more rural areas where it, there's greater travelling involved to attend group-based sessions, that we can uh, offer uh, um, choice and other modes of accessing uh, um, the interventions.